Ever since I was a kid, I can remember looking out my car window and watching as the heavy equipment went by, which naturally sparked the thought, wow, I wonder what kind of destruction I could accomplish with that at my disposal. Though, one piece of equipment always stood out more than the others. For me, who dreamed of digging moats and small jumps for my RC cars and BMX bikes, it was perfect. That piece of equipment was a skid steer. But judging by the fact even a used skid steer would cost me my left kidney on the black market, and the fact that your boy is still the smallest of small YouTubers, it's just not feasible. Not yet. So the next best thing, we'll have to be designing our own in SolidWorks and using the power of 3D printers and robotics to bring it to life. As for destruction, causing chaos on my desk will have to do for now. But there's a couple things I need to keep in mind if I want this video to be as amazing as it can be. If you remember a couple videos ago, I made this baby Wally robot and it was so cool. I made it so it could deliver tiny gifts and also give you that little aww feeling whenever it rolls up, which I believe it accomplished. Though if you were one of the people who did try to build this, you'll know how much of a pain it was to fit everything in and make it functional. The fact of the matter is, there was just way too much stuff going on in this little guy to make it easy to build. Five servos, two motors, an Arduino Nano, a Bluetooth module, a speaker, and so much other stuff. All packed into a housing about the size of my fist. So what have I learned and why is the Mini Skitty perfect for this? More moving parts isn't always better, and in the case of the Mini Skitty, there's just a lot less going on. There'll be one servo at the shoulder joint as well as another for the bucket tilt. And then of course the two motors to move it around which all of this together takes up a lot less space, making it easier for you and I to actually assemble everything without first hucking it across the room at light speed. Having learned from previous mistakes, I'm gonna go ahead and start this project off right by breadboarding all the electrical components, which starts with this ESP32. And why the heck couldn't they make it so that it could fit in a breadboard like any other normal microcontroller? All right, I got all our components breadboarded here. I'm just gonna go ahead and start off with the ESP32. If you're trying to upgrade for something like an Arduino Nano or Uno, this has quite a bit more processing power. It also has a built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chip, which makes projects like we're doing today extremely easy because you can just interface directly to it from an app such as Dabble, or you could write a little HTTP web page and use that as your controller. Moving on to our motors, we've got these tiny N20 motors and don't be fooled by their size. These things are little monsters, okay? They're like little Hercules. They connect into this little H bridge, which if you're not familiar with what an H bridge is, it pretty much just lets you swap the current forward or backward so that you can drive the motors forward or backward. Moving over to our servos, for the main arm boom, I'm using this SG90 servo. This should provide plenty of power for the size that we're going for. And then for our bucket tilt, we've just got this tiny little WK P0025. I've had mixed results with these, but I think for today, this is gonna work just fine. And finally, our power supply. I wanna use this nine volt battery. That way you can just go rip one out of your favorite fire alarm. Just kidding, don't actually rip that out of your favorite fire alarm. It's just something that a lot of people have and you wouldn't have to get an external battery. If for some reason this doesn't provide enough juice, my backup plan is using one of these little 2S batteries. I'm pretty confident that this will work just fine. Which leads us into our five volt butt converter. If you've never used a butt converter before, this is a super handy tool to have in your arsenal of stuff. I can drop the nine volts coming out of this down to five volts, which then makes it capable of use with our motors, our servos, and we don't have to worry about any kind of burnout or anything like that. So now that we've got it all breadboarded, it's time to write the code and see if we can get everything working the way we want it. Which, chances are, that won't happen. We'll have to make some adjustments, but hey, that's the beauty of electronics and robotics. You gotta, you gotta take joy in the struggle of So the code for the mini skiddy is actually gonna be super, super simple. It all bases off this Dabble app interface, which is just this nice little gamepad as you can see here. We can use these arrows to move the skid steer around, and then we can bind these other controls to move the arm and the bucket. The code to do this is actually super simple. It's all just in the main loop, and it just runs through a series of if statements to see whether or not one of the buttons is being pressed. So all in all, super simple code for this project, which is how we like it. Because you know what that means? Not a lot of troubleshooting. The biggest part of this project is going to be drawing the physical models and figuring out how everything is going to come together. I know I wanted to have a cartoony look with stout features, so I'm thinking big wheels and then a big cage, which is where the would-be person would sit. Also, I'm not an avid Fusion 360 user, I'm a SolidWorks user through and through, so if it looks like a monkey trying to eat a banana with its non-dominant hand, I apologize. Never mind, that didn't last long. I've just come way too far to not take advantage of my solid work skills. I'm sorry to everyone who loves Fusion 360. I've let you down. I promise to do better one day. 
It is the end of day two of the mini skitty build, and this is what we have so far in terms of actual CAD. This is made up of all the separate components put into one nice assembly, and so this is just kind of a rough outline of what it's gonna look like in the end. Obviously, I'm gonna add a little bit more detail to like the arm and the main housing and pretty much everything. The tires aren't gonna be smooth like this, they'll actually have texture. One thing you might notice is on the inside, there's currently no surfaces or holes or anything to mount any hardware to, and I did that on purpose. One thing I'm planning on doing is getting a custom circuit board made to replace this mess and it'll just slide right on the back right here and then I'll be able to take this battery and just pop it in through the front. On the back side I have plans on putting a nice little door right here and it will hinge at the top of this back panel. You'll be able to open it and that's where you'll access the on off switch as well as all the accessory pins. Now I am looking at this now and realizing that I never even thought about how I was going to mount the micro servo for the bucket tilt. So there's still things I gotta design and build. My idea to make this four wheel drive is all gonna hinge on using one motor per side. And so let's say for the left side, I'm gonna put a motor on this front wheel and then to drive the rear wheel, instead of using a bunch of gears to link them together, I'm thinking I'm actually just gonna make a little TPU belt and pulley system. So it'll run from the front motor to the back and that's what will drive the back. I'm not sure how well that's gonna work, but fingers crossed that it works out because I think that'd be super cool. So right off the bat, as with any fantastic project, which this is, there's some issues. The first and foremost is this belt system, which drives two of the wheels. These N20 motors sit in the front and back of the mini skiddy. One powers the left side and the other the right side. But you can't have a two wheel drive skid steer. That would be wrong. My solution to this were these tiny belts that I 3D printed out of TPU. They slide right over the drive shafts that are on the N20 motors and hook right onto the gear that's built into them. Now I do think they're going to work, but the problem right now is that they're slipping off of the drive gear or skipping teeth as it turns. To fix this, I'm just gonna remove one section of the belt to just make it a little bit smaller, as well as increase the length of the tooth on the belt and then the depth of the recess on the drive gear on the drive shaft. This will just give it a little bit more something to bite into and hopefully eliminate our slipping problem. After a quick redesign, this is what I came up with and it worked great. So with that means the beginning of a failed part pile, which as you'll see, grows rather quickly. The other issues are all relatively minor, one of which is increasing the diameter of this hole for the drive shafts, as well as increasing the space right here where the N20 motors are going to sit. That way they'll just sit down a little bit nicer. Right now it's just a little bit too snug. Otherwise everything is looking pretty promising. The battery and microcontroller are going to sit somewhat like this. Adding to our wonderful pile of not so great parts, we have the original axle lock nut things, we have the original chassis, the drive belts, and then the C-clips, which did actually prove to be useful, I just made a different version. It is currently almost midnight. Okay, what very tired me is attempting to say is that I just finished up the PCB circuit board design, got it ordered, and it was hopefully gonna be here in the next couple days. Now I'm no expert PCB designer, but that's one good looking circuit board. All right, it's officially time to start assembling our mini skiddy. As you can see, I have all the 3D printed parts laid out in front of me. And yeah, seeing it come together like this for the first time is always such a cool experience because you really get to kind of see life take form in the little guy. So before the big reveal, I realized as I was building this that there was a couple things that need to be redesigned and that there's also no way that this little servo is gonna have enough beans to lift anything other than the arm itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a couple gears onto the end of this to hopefully give it a little bit more torque. But luckily, with the power of editing, for you guys, that only takes this long. Did it? All right, here's what I changed. Instead of using this really tiny servo for the bucket tilt, I went ahead and upgraded to this SG90 because, well, Mole power, baby. Second, the arm now has a two to one gear ratio, which was accomplished by gearing the end of the servo to the servo arm. Oh yeah, and here's our boneyard pile so far. As you can see, it's definitely starting to fill up. Finally, the battery. The nine volt battery did work, but it only works for about two minutes and then it leaves the chat. So an effort to have longer run times and also save the earth, we're going LiPo. These two S300 milliamp LiPo tattoo batteries are perfect and they only cost about seven bucks. For another couple bucks, you can get one of these USB chargers, which is perfect for charging two S batteries. With that, here it is, the long awaited mini skiddy. This little guy turned out to be so much cooler than I had hoped. Driving it around, it actually does surprisingly well, and if you do manage to get it stuck, you can just use the arm to get yourself free. After switching to the new LiPo battery, I get about 10 to 15 minutes on a charge, and the extra bit of torque added to the servos lets you lift a respectable amount of weight for the size. So I think it'd be fun to throw a bigger servo on the arm at some point. 
In the future, I'll be making different bucket attachments, such as a log grabber so you can grab things, uh, as well as other little accessories like a trailer for putting stuff in, as well as some tank tracks instead of wheels. If you'd like to build one of these for yourself, all the files for 3D printing, coding, and wiring are linked below. Or if you'd like to support the channel, you can pick up a kit through professorboots.com linked below, which comes with everything you need minus the battery and charger. Or if you have your own 3D printer, you can just get the electronics kit and print your own parts, which is cheaper. All the proceeds go right back into making and developing the next DIY robotics project. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to comment down below what you'd like to see next, and thank you for watching.